Good morning guys. So today is Sunday. I typically don't do any filming or do any YouTube stuff on Sundays because it's upload day and I usually am up pretty late Fridays and Saturdays like getting my videos ready. But last week's video was kind of ahead of schedule. I was pretty prepared for it so I didn't feel like I used up all my energy this weekend so Sundays are kind of like the day that I do a lot of laundry. I like to reset my house back to like a really tidy state. I clean up all like little bits of messes that I leave throughout the week. I like to start Monday and the rest of the week with like a very tidy house that is clean. I like to get some candles burning and I just kind of get to some like bits and bobs I like to pot around the house. While I typically don't film on Sundays, it is December when you're seeing this, so happy December. And I've mentioned before that I'm gonna try to put out more content in December because I have a few weeks off, so I just need to build up some more stuff. And I think this week is gonna be quite busy for me, so I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film, so I just thought I'd take you through kind of the lazy Sunday pottering around the house. I am in the mood to do some repotting. It's nothing too crazy. A lot of them are just kind of like upsizing the pots that um, the plants currently are in into something bigger, not really like transitioning them to new substrates or anything. I don't have anything heavy duty to do, but I thought I'd just take you along and we'll just see how the day goes. So one of the first things I wanted to do today was check on my plants in the tent for signs of spider mites. So this is one of the plants that did get hit with spider mites and I'm basically just looking for webbing, little mites, and I don't really see any. So quick little update on the spider mite treatments. I've done an Azimax spray down I think four or five times now, mostly on this level here. And I've been checking mainly for the plants that got them the worst to see if the damage is increasing. Like this gloriosum leaf was the most affected by the spider mites. That's where the biggest infestation was. I wish I had a magnifying glass, but I don't. And I don't really see anything. And I'm also focusing a lot on new leaves, which unfortunately some of them are showing a bit of damage. This is the red crystallinum. Um, I'll see if I can get you close enough to see the details. But there is a little bit of damage on this one, but I don't see mites active mites. The Swamp Bunny 5 Cross, the new leaf is looking okay, but it's not definitely not looking perfect. What else is there? This is another plant that got hit with the spider mites. You can see some yellowing and some speckling, but I also don't see any active mites on here either. It has pushed out a new leaf. This Magnificum Ace of Spades Cross hasn't shown any damage and it's also pushed out a new leaf so I'm just kind of doing a quick check and then probably this evening I will um, spray it down again. Um, someone did ask me if I sprayed with the lights on and the answer is yes and I haven't seen burn on the leaves from the spray kind of sitting on the foliage while the lights are on. However, this plant which is my Mag Crystal Carla Cross definitely got some burning from the Azimax sitting on the leaves here. It looks pretty bad. And this hole is from like the leaf kind of growing into another leaf, this leaf I think it was, and it basically sliced it open. So that's nothing to do with the, the spray or the spider mites. So I think from now on, I'm just gonna spray it like after the lights go off in the evening before bedtime. But the real telltale thing for me to see if the mites are truly gone are to see how like new leaves develop that uh, emerged after the spider mites were first treated. So like this one and this one. Just wanted to quickly show you, this is my um, Carla Black Velvet Eastern Panama. And there is a little bit of speckling, which hasn't increased. I believe that there aren't active mites on here, but this is kind of sad, but it did, did form quite cute. Isn't that pretty? So we're gonna go through the house right now and kind of pick up plants to repot. So my Winlingeri definitely needs a new pot. I really don't like this slitted pot anymore for it, even though it probably kind of likes it. It has a leaf that's about to unfurl, so I think now is a great time, so I'll take that. Same thing with my Vichii. I really don't want it in this pot anymore, so let's get them out as well. My Pink Princess, which is growing, I believe, in Killer Pond. Let's get them out as well. Oh, it's too heavy. I gotta do this two-handed. This is um, usually to do with airflow. This is on the very highly variegated parts. And this leaf never really like fully developed. This is the newest leaf. It's fully, fully green. But look how beautiful that color is. I think that uh, it's getting 
most of its water from the roots within the within the pole because if you look in the substrate there really aren't that many roots so this is not working for this plant at all this should be pretty easy i'll just get it repot in, into something smaller and not killer pond i feel like that's probably enough plants for now i totally forgot about one plant that i've been meaning to repot for the longest time my burly marks fantasy this one is on like a stick with like moss bits tied around it and since it's not attached to anything anymore, you can see all the leaves are growing really, really juvenile. So I'm gonna get it into a tree fern fiber pole, which I've been meaning to do for a really long time. Plus it's still in moss. So I probably have like four plants still in moss right now. So I'm slowly working through getting the last stragglers out of moss into something better. And then I'm gonna use one of Lauren's um, lazy moss poles, which is not the lazy moss pole design, but it is technically an extremely lazy pole, which I've mentioned in the past before is actually a perfect design for tree fern fiber because it has the enclosed back, but these holes are small enough that they can hold the tree fern fiber without it all spilling out. I'm doing them on the tightest setting right now because there's three different kind of like belt buckle sizes you can use. I'm doing it on the tightest one because the plant is so small and also because I'm using tree fern fiber, I don't want to overuse such an expensive substrate. I cannot believe that it's already December. For the month of December, I'm gonna try to do two videos a week, but I'm not gonna force it either. I have three weeks off starting from the 10th and I thought that would be the perfect time to do more Christmassy content because if you didn't already know, I live for Christmas. Like there is nothing more, I don't know. It's just, there's nothing more magical to me on this earth than Christmas time. I don't know why I became this way because ever since I was little, I've loved Christmas, but I didn't go grow up in a family where like Christmas was a really big thing. Like we are immigrants from Taiwan and Christmas is just not that big in Asia and my parents, you know, I think they knew how much I loved it. So my mom would always like get a tree, well, not always get a tree, she would get a tree when she could. And we would do Christmassy things. We always have a turkey dinner, but I think I'm the only person in my family that's this level of obsessed over Christmas. No matter how busy it gets or and how stressful it can be with like gifts and stuff and how expensive it can get, I try to find the time to enjoy the season and enjoy the little things like go see Christmas lights and listen to a lot of Christmas music, decorate. Um, my boyfriend and I are both very, very into Christmas, but he is British. So <laughs> culturally he grew up with Christmas being a very big deal and he has a lot of like family tradition. I don't know why I'm this way, but I don't know anyone in my personal life that is quite as obsessed with Christmas as I am. And for that reason, I wanted to make my channel very festive this year. With plants and everything, it can get pretty repetitive. So I was thinking to incorporate some like non-planty things because I do want to get back into baking. I don't know if anyone would be interested in that. So do let me know. I used to bake a lot and especially in COVID when we were in lockdown, like a lot of people, we, I baked a ton and I enjoyed it so much. But since I've been so busy, I've really fallen off baking, but I want to do more of that. I want to do more kind of like creative crafty things. Seeing as like this year has been so financially devastating for me, our whole strata had to uh, replace our roofs this year. So that was like a huge, huge unexpected expense for me. And so I don't think that I'm going to have a lot of funds for Christmas shopping. So hopefully the people closest to me will be understanding of that. Luckily, but also not luckily, my mom is not here for Christmas. She's spending Christmas with her family in Taiwan. Very rarely do we not spend Christmas together. One of the only Christmases in recent memory, I think that I've we ha I haven't spent with my family is when my boyfriend and I went to Britain for Christmas to visit his family. So it's gonna be weird to ha not have my mom, but that's one less present to buy, I guess, cause she's not gonna be back until the new year. I'm just taking off all the string and then um, the moss up here is quite dry. So I'm gonna just wet it really quickly before I continue. I didn't get it that wet, but it's okay. I don't think the roots in here are any good anyways. And then um, in terms of like friends gifts or plenty friend group, uh, Charmaine, Jing and Aaron, we're doing a 
dinner before Charmaine goes to California. So I think she's leaving on the 19th. We're gonna do it around like, I think it's the 10th. We're gonna do what we did last year, which was like, we do a little white elephant thing. So we don't have to get a gift for every single um, lady. Oh, this is two sticks. I forgot I put two sticks in here. So I still haven't gotten my white elephant gift yet because last year we pretty much all did shears for each other. And now we all have shears, so we don't need to do that. So this is off. In terms of the moss that I just removed, I'm gonna sift through it for dead roots and like garbage. And then I have this like bin of like junk moss that I use for like moss poles and things like that. I might end up with very little moss from this because it's quite broken down. And also, if you don't use a bench scraper for repotting, I highly recommend you get this. I got this just for free from one of the suppliers that we work with at work, but you can probably easily get like a crappy plastic one at the dollar store or um, from a kitchen supply store, but like everything, everything just scrapes up so easily. I'm gonna fill the pole with tree fern fiber first, and then I'm gonna attach the plant to the pole, then pot it all into a pot. So yeah, in terms of Christmas presents, really I have my boyfriend and my immediate family, but really the one person who's gonna be present at Christmas time that I really, really wanna buy a present for is my dad. He's probably the one person I struggle to buy for the most, which I think is pretty common for dads because they don't need that much. And every time I buy him anything, he's like saying I need to save my money. I'm not gonna fill it all the way up to the top because the plant's not gonna reach the top, especially because I am going to chop the top of the plant off. So this is more than enough. Oh no. Okay, I didn't realize the plant was this tall. Okay, I know what I can do. I'm gonna climb two cuttings up this pole. I'm going to chop it. So I have a really long root coming from the node of this leaf here. So I can chop it down here. And then for the bottom, I have two leaves that I can climb up next to the other plant. That will be good. So I really like how it looks down here, but up here is starting to get a little straggly. I have chopped this node before because you can see like uh, another branch has come off here, which I think I chopped here. So that means I'll te definitely chop these three leaves off. And I would love these leaves to lay flat here, but I don't think it's going to. I think we can keep it like this. I think we'll do one of these hexagon pots. So, like this. I feel like it can kind of nestle into the corner here, so it's not gonna be like this. It's gonna be like on the diagonal. I think that would look nicer. I think Huxley saw someone at the door. It sounds like all our deliveries are coming today, so Huxley's kind of freaking out. So if you hear him running around, it's probably because he saw a delivery van outside. All right, so that one's done. So it's basically going to be growing 100% in tree fern fiber with some perlite mixed in. So there's tree fern fiber and perlite here, tree fern fiber and perlite in the pot. Every time I water, I'll just water from here and I'll let it just kind of drain down. Tree fern fiber doesn't really get hydrophobic, so it'll kind of drain down really easily. I actually really love this plant. I just been neglecting it so much because I'm not really sure why. I think I got a bit of fatigue from this plant because it grows so fast and it's really hard to get them to maintain large leaves. But I've seen photos of like very mature Burley Marks Fantasy. They're always in the States because the biggest ones are in the States. And 
if I could grow one that big, even if the leaves were like that big, that would be such a dream. So basically it's not going to happen by the time it reaches the top of this pole. I'm probably gonna have to like chop and like, you know, drop it back down a few times for it to get to that size. But I'm glad I'm finally got it potted up for success. I wanted to do the VGI next. So basically this is in like a soil mix that is like probably 100% amendments. I used to make my own soil mix out of like just coconut coir and husk, bark, charcoal, perlite, some leca thrown in sometimes and some moss. And no, none of my plants did well in that. It's just, it just too devoid of nutrients. So let's get them out. For growing in that pot for so long, this should have way more roots than it currently does. And the roots don't look amazing. They don't look dead, but it doesn't look like there's lots of active root growth, if any. Some of these roots up top are dead. Oh, there's a good root here. But I think this can be much happier in a better substrate. I wish I could chop this plant, but I had chopped it already. So the stem is so tiny and the nodes are packed so tightly together. But I want to give Amanda a Vici because she doesn't have one for some reason. If, if anyone can grow a majestic one, it's her. But I don't think I can chop this. I can tell you for certain that with this pot, because there's all these holes on the side, it was drying out too much. So anytime I underwater it, I think I must have underwater a few times in the summer, this happens. So I think I'm gonna do kind of like a, kind of a custom mix for it. I wanna do my usual soil mix, but mix it with some tree fern fiber. I'm gonna scoop soil into here. I think I'll do like 50-50 soil and tree fern fiber because I don't think I'm gonna use this custom mix for anything anytime soon. I don't wanna make too much. So I'm gonna measure out in the pot and I'll mix it. So that was soil, this is tree fern fiber. And then accounting for the root mass, so this is probably more than enough. I find it so difficult to go by like actual ratios when I'm mixing substrates, cause I just don't think that like my brain works that way. So I always go by my gut feeling of how like it feels. And it feels okay. The particulates are kind of fine on it. So I think I want to add maybe a bit more, I don't really have any bark. And I don't like to put orchiata into soil mixes. So this is what it looks like now. Like it looks quite fine, right? But because it's tree from fiber, it's like, it's very fluffy. It won't compact that much. So I feel like it's gonna be okay, but maybe a little bit more perlite. I just rinsed out some extra large perlite. Dump in some. I'm feeling good about the aeration levels of this one. I probably should have a potting mat down, but it's too late now, I've already made a mess. happy with that of course dirty great white water I'm not gonna water it deeply because there was already a little bit of moisture in the substrate from the tree fern fiber but I just want to make sure at least the water reaches and covers the entire root ball but it doesn't need to go all the way to the bottom and like drain out do the same thing with the burly marks fantasy except this time I'm gonna pour a little bit into the pole and then a bit down in the pot. So I will say if you're gonna do a pole like this or if you wanted to do a soil pole, so something like what I just did for the Vichy Ice, uh, like a soil mix with like bark and stuff with tree fern fiber because tree fern fiber can be so expensive. The tree fern fiber is super helpful in that because 
We know with like peat moss based soils, it gets really, really hydrophobic. And I've tried moss poles with that, just a, with a soil mix and a lot of bark. It became just as hydrophobic as a sphagnum moss pole would be, but the tree fern fiber is gonna be what allows the water to drain through rather than just kind of bead off the sides. Anyways, I'm gonna take a quick break. <laughs> I've only done two plants, but I really want another coffee, so I'll be back. Okay, we have two more plants to go This is the one lingeri. You can see all these area roots are kind of just like growing in the air. So I want to bury it deeper into a substrate. And this is also in one of those like soilless amendment mixes. There was like a like a drainage layer at the bottom. There's looks to be like a lot of moss in here. Probably a lot of amendments I can save for later, but I want to get this into probably pure tree fern fiber. So anyway, back to the topic of December, I mentioned in the past like the idea of Vlogmas, which I'm not gonna actually do in like the pure Vlogmas sense, which is daily vlogging and posting a video every single day for December 1st up to Christmas Eve or Christmas day. There's just no way. The way, <laughs> the way I film and the way I like pack things into videos, they're just too long to like edit down into like little snippets and stuff. I just don't think that it's, really my style or I just don't have a way of like really paring down my days that way and plus like my life is not that interesting that I can fill up with like little moments. Right now I'm contemplating a schedule of uploading on Sundays as usual and also Thursdays and have like maybe one of them be kind of a vlog type video a little bit more casual and maybe mixed with more non-planty content but I'm also determined to make this holiday season very festive and I really want to make sure that I take the time to enjoy all the things I want to enjoy and not just get caught up in the stress of it all and try to be productive all the time. I want to make sure I take the time to do all the things that make the holiday season like feel very warm and like gooey and like magical and Christmassy because what always ends up happening is on December 26th I get really 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 sad like once Christmas Day is over even like the evening of Christmas Day I tend to get quite sad not only because Christmas is over but also because I feel like regret over like not living the season to its fullest so while I am gonna try to make more videos I will definitely prioritize doing um, Christmas Christmassy things and because I'm not comfortable filming in public I may not now looking at this plant, I am so tempted to chop it. There are a few nodes down here where this leaf is attached to that has all this root. And then I have all this root up here. Maybe I'll be brave and actually chop this plant. We're gonna do it. But I'm gonna definitely make sure I sanitize my scissors just with isopropyl alcohol. Oh my goodness, my neighbor's putting up Christmas lights. Yes, rainbow ones, do more. Let's chop you. Oh, there's two leaves on that. Little baby wind linger eye. And that's it, I'm not gonna do any more. Let's pot you up into a little, little tiny pot with tree fern fiber, little baby. Okay, I have two sizes. Let's see which one works better. I think this will work. It'll look kind of ridiculous in this one anyways. I haven't propagated in so long. I haven't been propagating because I don't want more plants, especially duplicates of plants I already own and I don't really sell plants anymore. I actually forgot how fun it is to chop up and duplicate your plants. All right, that's all potted up. Now just add a little bit of great white water. I'll just sit it in the BGI pot. Now, the main plant. So I'm gonna try to get all the aerial roots down here into the substrate. It looks so crazy. Like, look at this plant. Thank you. 
Okay, that one's done. <sighs> Fingers crossed it does not throw a fit and drop all its leaves because I will be extremely sad. More great white water. <sighs> Finally, I have this repotted and I enjoy these pots so much more than these pots. I'm probably gonna just wash and donate these because I just, I don't use them for anything anymore. I, I couldn't think of an instance where I'll actually use these because I don't really grow many orchids. So I'll probably keep a few around in case I collect more orchids, but for my aeroids, I don't use this anymore. I feel like I've been repotting for hours now. I don't know how long it's actually been. We just have the pink princess left to do and then we're gonna call it a day, I think. We're gonna just time lapse the pink princess. Add some great white, of course. All right, she is done. Nothing too drastic. I just got the substrate changed out because I was nine. I'm 99% sure that it was in Killer Pond because you could see like the root mass is pretty much the same as what I started with. It didn't burn off the roots by any means, but it definitely um, there's something wrong <laughs> with this plant. So hopefully, the next leaves will kind of develop a little bit better. It may just be that the highly, highly pink leaves are like that because of all that variegation because because a leaf like this formed really nicely. So trial and error, I guess. All right, I have so much cleanup to do right now. So I'm gonna do that. I think that's all the filming I'll do for today. So I'll see you next time. Hey guys, it's been many days now. The week's actually been quite a lot busier than I expected it to be and uh, my whole body hurts. It was just um, a very physically and mentally draining week so I didn't really have like any moments I wanted to film but also <laughs> at the same time I need to kind of close off this video and I'm on my phone right now because um, I'm trying to chat with Fido which is like my cell phone service provider. Basically I tried to order a new phone for Black Friday and um, there was a good promotion on and I changed my plan, I signed a contract and then like a few days later they cancelled my phone at the good price that they had promised me because it was like out of stock at that one pickup location when I had signed the contract so they could have just like shipped it to me from another location but they just decided to cancel the whole thing and then I finally got in touch with someone today and he like reordered it to me and he like price matched it to the promotion price and then I got the confirmation email after the chat ended and it was like the wrong phone <laughs> so I'm on the chat with him again and this guy I don't know if he's gonna be able to like figure it out but this is putting me in such a bad mood I also woke up just in a sheer panic because today by the way is Saturday morning this video is supposed to go up tomorrow but today is kind of a little bit of a busy day because later today I'm going to North for Tropical de Charmaine I do plan on filming that but you won't see that until the next video and um, I I woke up this morning with just like my whole body like so sore and then I immediately just was like it's December 3rd you have not started your Christmas shopping you have one week to get a white elephant gift for one of the girls. You have not done anything Christmassy, you've not decorated, you still have to film their video. I was just like almost having a meltdown this morning. So yeah, um, that's kind of where I'm at. But I wanted to jump on here today because I remembered I did prepare one gift, just a gift for a friend, a coworker that um, I've, kind of been through a lot with this year and I wanted to give them something because they are super into plants and I 
I feel like they might watch this channel sometimes, so I'm really hoping they don't see it. But anyways, I'm gonna give it to them early. I'm gonna give it to them the day after this video goes live, so hopefully they're not seeing it. I'm gonna be checking my phone periodically to make sure that he's not messing up this order. Anyways, I thought this was a good gift idea for like, for a plant lover, but it's like on a budget. But you know, the impact is still there. So my friend has been wanting a variegated Monstera Albo for a really long time. I don't think they've gotten one yet. They haven't bitten the bullet. So this one is actually a propagation of the one I got from Aaron, Umberto. I would have shown that in my plant tour. I thought I still have Umberto. I can still chop them. Um, I'm not as into variegated Monsteras as they are. So it had been Oh my God, are you joking me? Oh, freaking, I, I, I swear to God, the cell phone people are just here to drive you crazy so you'll pay whatever price they want you to pay. He's saying basically they don't have that phone anymore. I'm asking like, you don't have this iPhone anywhere in Canada is what I'm asking. Anyways, so back to this. I thought this would be a really nice Christmas gift for someone, but you know, me being super broke, I can't really afford to like buy something brand new for everyone in my life. So I repotted him in soil. He was in pond and that little like propagation cup he was in, it was totally like full. And then I put him on one of Lauren's um, like DJ poles. I just filled it halfway with moss cause his stem's like all the way down here. It has lots of room to root into this pole before it kind of reaches this level. I wanted to do this a little bit earlier just to make sure that like it rooted well in the new substrate and that it was stable and literally like the next day after I repotted it, this leaf started to emerge and it's rooting happily in the new substrate. So this is basically my aeroid mix. I added some extra perlite and then I obviously inoculated it with great white. I used some like recycled moss. This is not like brand new sphagnum moss. I just wanted to hop on here and show this as like a possible gift idea if you have like a cute plant you can take a cutting of, just like dress it up nicely. And it could be like a really impactful gift, especially if it's like a wish list plant for somebody. Or if, are you joking? I'm not waiting till Boxing Day to get this phone. Like literally stop selling things you don't have. Anyways, even if it's like not really a plant person, but you can kind of see like this being a nice decor item in their home, it can be a really nice budget friendly gift because we're literally farming gifts in our houses, you know? And this pole, I think it's around $5, between five and $10 from Lauren. She does ship these. If you are buying them like through shipping, I would recommend kind of getting a bulk amount because they are a certain dimension. Not They're not super heavy, but the weight does add up, but like just to get kind of maximize the amount of poles you're gonna get per shipment, like splitting this with a friend. But it's been really nice to have this pole even just for myself handy when I need a pole and I can just like quickly assemble it and stuff it in, uh, stuff some moss into it. I hate this guy, I hate him so much. But yeah, I think I'm gonna end this vlog here. Like I mentioned, I am trying to get um, another video up midweek and then another one up for next Sunday. And hopefully I will see you back here on Thursday for another video. If you're also planning the Christmas season, let me know what you've got planned because I am, I'm kind of stumped as to what to do to kind of like get into the mood and celebrate Christmas. Like, like do I want to go like chop my own tree down? Do I want to go see lights? I don't ice skate, that would be really embarrassing. Maybe I wanna to go to like a craft market, I don't know. I'm looking for ideas to get into the season. Let me know how you get into like the holiday mood and let me know like if you have any like traditions that you follow every year. I would love some inspiration. But anyway, I need to get going. I have so many things to pack up for tonight to go to Lauren's place. I think, uh, did I already say this already? We're having, she's invited some of us over for pizza and some repotting. So I won't be filming a ton, but I'll try to get some footage there and like maybe a card chat with Charmaine. I know like a 30 minute video is like not a short video, but for me, it seems really short. So thank you guys so much for watching the short one. I hope you enjoyed it. It. If you did, please remember to give it a like. I hope you have a great rest of the day. Stay warm. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Mwah.